We're staged for another run of Nitro Fuel NHRA Talk. It's the Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, with Marty Huff and 10-time NHRA winner Doug Herbert. Now, here are your hosts, Doug and Marty. This is the Straight Line on Drag Racing. Thanks for being here for the kickoff of our half hour of horsepower. Appreciate you being with us. We light the candles on the 2017 NHRA season this weekend, and we're doing so with three-time Top Fuel World Champion, Antron Brown. Wherever you may be, coast to coast, around the world, this is the Straight Line on Drag Racing here on MRN.com. Along with four-time IHRA Top Fuel Champion and 10-time NHRA National Event winner Doug Herbert, I am Marty Huff, back for another year of drag racing talk here on MRN.com. There's an off-season for the racers, but there's really no off-season for you, my friend. I mean, you are going since we last left uh, in November, after Pomona, after all the, the champions were crowned, you've been really busy with a, a lot of different things. Uh, first of all, with the with the Brakes Foundation, you've already done a couple of schools this year. Yeah, we're hitting the ground running and doing some uh, doing some fun stuff this year. We had one at Barrett Jackson yeah. uh, out there it was pretty neat in Scottsdale, Arizona, and then this last weekend, uh, family with a similar situation to mine down in Charleston, South Carolina. We went down there and had a Brakes uh, program in uh, memory of their son, Trip uh, Rabin. So pretty neat. And uh, this weekend, we're really getting going. We're going yeah. to San Diego. We've got Pomona wow. coming up. We've got classes over here at ZMAX. So a lot of breaks coming up. Uh, you know, breaks is not driver's ed. So, uh, you know, if you have a driving age teenager that has some understanding about driving, bring into breaks. We'll, we'd love to uh, teach them, uh, make them a little bit more responsible, make them a little bit better driver behind the wheel. Put on the brakes.org is information on that one. But then drag racing, a lot of changes over the winter. A lot of things coming up. Yeah, and it really started off very early on in the offseason when Del Worsham announced that he was leaving Coletta Motorsports. At the time, nobody really knew what was going on. Then it eventually, fans found out that he's going back to his family operation, which is what they did for many, many, many years, and really kind of how he got his name with his dad, Chuck. And yeah. they're kind of going back and doing that. And so that opened up a couple of holes at... Coletta, where J.R. Todd uh, moved into the now funny car. Now they'll be car. driving the DHL funny car, and, Scott's car. Uh, and, and Troy Coughlin will now be full-time, where he was just a part-time driver uh, before with the uh, in the dragster. So um, l let's go over all three of those. First of all, Dale Worsham going back and working with his dad. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, that's cool. That's what Dale wants to do that, and for, uh, for Dale to have the opportunity to go back and work with his dad, you know that's what he likes. They're a California-based bunch, and uh, you know to have them to have them back racing together. I think that's a really good deal. I talked to Dell. He's excited and happy about it. Uh, they were still working on getting some funding together, but I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be good. They're going to be winning races in no time. J.R. Todd, um, when he was working for Bob Gilbertson here in the in the local area, um, got a couple of test squirts in a, in a funny car. So it's not like it's totally foreign to him, but obviously you start trying to rustle one of those funny cars around, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but a guy that's, he's been there, done that. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be fine. You know, it's about like Gary Selzy, right? Hopping out of yeah, a right. dragster, hopping into a funny car and, uh, you know, it takes a few laps to learn and, and obviously Selzy figured it out and managed to win a championship at the end of the day. So I think, uh, I think they're going to be fine. I think one of the big news was uh, the Jimmy Proc, Chris Cunningham team from wow. Jack Beckman they all packed up and left and went over to John Force Racing with uh, John Medlin. And then Medlin stayed a couple days, uh, decided that yeah. he'd left things back over there yeah. at uh, Schumacher's. And so he went back. But John Force is uh, getting some pretty neat guys back there. And, and obviously, Jimmy Proc has had quite a bit of experience working with Force. So I think that'll be, that's going to be a pretty good addition. And then looking at the testing results... Uh, from last week and over there in Phoenix, it looked like obviously the Force guys made a pretty good boy. Uh, I guess made a pretty good change with yeah. Courtney Force being number one with a four. Uh, oh, excuse me, a three eighty on the testing, and then John Force coming up in the uh, third quickest in the testing. Ron Cap second with three eighty five. John Force third with uh, three eighty five. Robert Height with three eighty five, and then J.R. Todd coming in with a three ninety. Del Warsham following with a four oh six. The 
the ladies really had their time uh, during testing. Uh, Leah Pritchett, 365 to lead top fuel. Uh, I mean, both of those, uh, uh, the, th the 365 by Leah Pritchett and the 380 by Courtney Force would have been world records at the time, but obviously they don't count that for testing. They, they don't tech them. They, they don't do a lot of things. Well, with sometimes that testing over there in Phoenix is kind of like Disneyland about this time of year because the weather conditions <laughs> yeah, are perfect. Right. The track is really good. There's not a bunch of people out there uh, getting dirt and oil and stuff yeah. on the track. So, sure. But you know what? Those numbers will correlate. If they can take it to Pomona and uh, they can correlate those numbers, it's going to be pretty good. The guy that we have coming up on the show, uh, uh, Antron Brown had a pretty good run of 370 over there during testing, so we'll talk to him a little bit about his testing and, and uh, obviously coming off with the number one again on his car this coming up year. Yeah, and we'll have more about what happened in the off season, But uh, coming up, uh, we have on the phone with us, and we'll talk to him here in just a second, the two-time and defending and three-time overall world champion Antron Brown joins us next. Are you in the concrete, construction, or waste industry? Are repair bills starting to pile up as your current mixer, dump, or waste truck starts to show its age? Before you make that plunge, consider an alternative to buying new. The Housby 2G Second Generation Program is the complete refurbishment of your existing used trucks without the hefty price tag that comes with it. Extend the life of your current trucks today and give yourself an economic alternative to that new truck price. For more information, visit Housby.com. Housby, an official sponsor of NASCAR for over four years. If you or your family love the freedom of swimming any time of year, if you love sharing good times and making great memories, or if you want one of the best total body workouts ever, then it's time to discover the three C's of your very own endless pool. The first C is convenience. Imagine swimming year-round in your own private swimming pool, installed indoors or out, just steps away. The second C is comfort. With sculpted spa seats and your own adjustable temperature, you can easily escape the stress of your day. And the third C is cost. Your endless pool is an affordable luxury at a fraction of the cost of a regular pool. And here's a bonus C, choice. Because when you call for your free endless pool idea kit, you'll receive information on our full line of pools to suit your budget and location. Call now for free information, 800-283-8089, 800-283-8089. Welcome back to The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's more with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Thanks for being with us on the kickoff of this 2017 NHRA Mellow Yellow Drag Racing season. Along with Doug Herbert, I am Marty Huff, and we are joined on the telephone line right now by the driver of the Matco Tools Top Fuel Drankster for Don Schumacher Racing. He is the two-time and defending three-time overall world champion, <laughs> Antron Brown. I'm out of breath, Antron. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot to intro you now, dude. I know, I mean, it's really. <laughs> hey, hey, it's, it's always a pleasure to hear you say that, but it's like, it's, it's, it's becoming a tongue twister. Does that mean that, uh, does that mean I'm getting a little bit more part of history? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to right. get in those history books a little bit and uh, be a part of NHRA history. Antron, uh, you know, bringing that home, you guys with Brian Karate and Mark Oswald have had the core team together for quite a long time. Is there anything... Uh, that you guys can't do. I mean, that you, you got an all-star, man. I mean, the whole, just the whole bunch. You, you guys are, and and besides being obviously great on the car, everybody on that team are they're all nice guys. I, I, you know, all of you guys are just nice guys. Well, Doug, you know it, man. You, you've been around this sport, and and you know what it takes to to have a, a championship contending team. You just gotta, you got you gotta put the work in, and that's one thing that I could tell you that all my guys on my team, from Brian to Mark. Brad, our assistant crew chief, and all the other guys on our MACO U.S. Army, Toyota Dragster, man, they just they get it. They, they, they just don't want to go out there and do it. Like, you know, when we went out there testing in Phoenix, is uh, we didn't have one thing that was the same on a car from one pass to another. We just kept our car with the same baseline, and we just kept on swapping things in and out to see what's going to be better, if something's going to be more efficient, or if it made it run smoother run easier and when you got guys that's constantly evolving working on new stuff like that i mean and then and then when you get some of the new stuff to work it, it puts you ahead of the competition and and that's what really helped us last year is that we kept on pressing that envelope we kept on changing things and 
not to be the same. And sometimes we took a step backwards. We never always went forward, but we always made changes to get better. And uh, including myself, just putting that work in to try to be better each and every weekend to get better and better and peak at the right time in the season and go after that championship. And we've been very fortunate the last two years to really pull it off. And, and that's all credit to how hard we work and how much we want it. Your teammate, Tony Schumacher, has never been afraid of taking that step back. As long as you're taking one step back to take two steps forward, are you mind doing that if, if you're trying some things and maybe take a half step back or a full step back, knowing that that probably somewhere down the road is going to help you? Well, absolutely. You never know, Marty. You never know if it's going to help you down the road <clears throat> until you start using it. But the thing about it is what we look for in these cars are what we've been working on is is to go down the racetrack, be able to push on the motor and make good power, but come back and make the engine look like it didn't even run. Hmm. And those are the type of things that we've been working on. So then when we want to lean on it, we can lean on it and still go down the racetrack and go faster. You know what I mean? And uh, we didn't we didn't go out there to try to set no world records. And but the thing about it is, is that we went out there as a learning phase because we know how to go fast, but you have to go fast at certain given moments. You know what I mean? You can't break world records all the time, but some people go out there and test where they need to work on things and different stuff to go faster and better. And our teammate, they made some phenomenal runs, man. They, they ran 65 and uh, the 65 was very, very impressive. 67, 68, everybody's been there, done that, but to run a 65, that that was something special. So so with that being said, now we know where the bar is raised on that end, but we were working on some other things that we think that's going to be more beneficial down the road uh, throughout the race season that we've been wanting to try. Like every lap we had something different on our race car hmm. where we didn't change the tune-up. We just, we just left it the same where it could run a low 70, it should run like a 70, 71. We left it alone where it go down the track every time and we just swapped out parts to see how it was going to work. And it was a – it was a really good test session for us where we learned a lot. Well, that's a methodical way to do it, and that's how uh, Karate and, and Mark Oswald and your whole team has been able to pull off what they pulled off. Hey, let me ask you, so, uh, you know, last year Don Schumacher Racing brings home the third championship with you and then also the uh, first championship for Ron Cap. So two of the fuel championships were, you know, both grabbed over there at DSR. What does that make the pressure like for you guys over there this year? We know Don doesn't <laughs> like to sit around and, and look at trophies. He likes to go out there and make win more. Well, one, hey, hey, Doug, just like you said it, man, once once that war ceremony was over, all the celebration was done. You know what I mean? I think I think Caps lived as a rock star for, for a month after the <laughs> war ceremony because – he deserved to, man, all the stuff that he's been through. And he finally brought that one home with Tobler and, and with Napa. That that was just a good deal for him. And, but for us, once we got back, once and once that war ceremony was over, we were already contemplating at the end of the year before we even went to the ceremony, Brian and Mark and Brad and all the guys, I mean, they were already talking about what we're going to try, what some of the things we're going to work on. Uh, we've been working back and forth with the good people over at Diamond Piston and Trend to work on the top end, like, you know, from pistons to, to valve train stuff on our car to make it better. And, uh, at the end of the day, so we can make more power, but without tearing things up. So, so we've been working on a lot of new innovative stuff that I think that throughout this year is going to come to fruition for us throughout the year. Once we get to the later part of the season and hopefully it pay dividends, like the things that we worked on in the past paid good dividends for us before. Some drivers like being the hunter. I don't think you have a problem being the hunt ed, uh, winning three championships in five years. Is there a problem with you, or do you feel uh, that much more pressure having the target be on you? You know, Mark, it, I never really worried about that. You know, uh, I never worried about people like, you know, coming to hunt me because. No matter what you are, whether you're a champ or not, people know what cars are very, like, you know, are very competitive, that, that run great ETs. And whoever you line up against, you want to step up to that plate because it's a challenge, and you want to take them out. And, of course, being a champ, like, you know, like Tony Schumacher, uh, he's an eight-time world champ. No matter when I line up against him, if he won the championship the year before or 
two years ago. He is the best of the best. He is the best. He's the most winningest top field driver in the history of the sport. And any time that we line up against him, I want to take him out. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, yeah. you want to take the best of the best out. So there's a lot of great competitors in the class now. There's not no more like, okay, there's only two cars, three or four cars. There, there's over 10 competitive cars that can run a world record at any time and take you out. So, so when we line up against them, I look forward to that challenge. And I know that we have to raise our, our level of game because a lot of people know that our team, we run very consistent, we, and, and we, could, we could drop low ET. And then they know that when I'm in the car that I'm going to leave on time on the start line. So whenever we race somebody – Trust me, we get the best of the best out of them every time we race them because it could be somebody that cuts 70s on a normal deal. They race us, they're cutting 50s and 40s, and then they're dropping low ET bombs on us. So Hmm. so every time we look at it, we're like, man, I was like, we just keep on getting it. And we got that for the last, for like last five years in a row, we've been getting that kind of treatment because they know what to expect when they race us. So that's not going to change. And the only thing that's going that we have to make different for us is that we got to raise our level of the game so we could be ahead of them because everybody's pretty much running neck and neck now at the same level. Antron, how about your guys over there at Matco Tools? They've got to be just tickled pink with the performance, and I know you go out there and do a lot of interaction with all the uh, Matco Tool dealers and, and franchisees, so uh, they've just got to be beyond excited with the performance and, and uh, you know everything that you've done with your team and what you do personally for them as a sponsor. Well, you know, Doug, for that uh, Maco, we've been with them now for a lot of years. This is the tenth year of driving the Maco Tools Top Fuel Dragster for them. This is going to be our tenth season, and uh, they, they've been ecstatic. And all the distributors, they know this is their race car, and we all do it together. And I think that's one of the big driving forces with our team is that with the company representing the company like Maco, it, it's more than just representing the company. We're, we're representing the change of life. Well, we're able to take normal technicians or people that could be a tasty cake deliver man or or it might be somebody that was a car salesman or somebody that you know that's buster knuckles in a technician shop and they want change your life we we're able to bring them on board make them a franchisee and they own their own business and now they become a part of this team not just on the racetrack but off the racetrack where we all help each other out <coughs> to be successful and uh it's been a very very great partnership where we're able to work together like that and whenever i go at every race i go I have my own cheerleading section there with people with Maco tools, T-shirts on, like replica crew jerseys, and they're all in the grandstands. They all walk there, and they're all Maco customers ordered and distributors and district sales managers that come out to every race that we go to across the country. So it gets no better than that, and uh, and it's been it's been a dream. Like I mean, these uh, these ten years that we've done with them, we've done a lot of great things together, made history together and brought three championships home, and that's because how we all work together as one unit, as one team. We'll take a quick break. We'll have more with Antron Brown in just a minute. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcasts elevate your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. It's a new era of NASCAR excitement. Chase Elliott, your leader, Joey Logano, right on the back bump. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Eric Jones able to break away by a car length and a half. Featuring the world's best drivers. Kevin Harvick still trying to catch Jimmy Johnson. Fighting for the biggest prize in racing. And he is your champ. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. The Daytona 500. February 26th on the Motor Racing Network. The voice of NASCAR. Looking to find the best place for all the latest NASCAR Sprint Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, K&N, and Modified Series News? MRN.com is the place to go. Your online home for NASCAR news, opinion, podcasts, videos, race schedules, results, and statistics. Award-winning motorsports writers keep you informed and up-to-date on all the latest breaking NASCAR news and in-depth stories and opinion. MRN.com, your online home for all the NASCAR information you're looking for. 
It's The Straight Line, brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, once again, here's Doug and Marty. Thanks for being here on MRN.com. Kickoff of the 2017 drag racing season. And on the phone line with us right now is Antron Brown. Antron, you know, one thing I've wondered about, and I think we've talked about it a little bit in the past, but how have things changed, uh, things changed for you and, uh, you know, for your team, even though it's kind of the same guy, since you first got that chance to test and get your top fuel license in the, uh, in the Maco Tools car way back when it was David Powers? Well, you know, Doug, what, what's changed is, is that uh, we evolved. You know what I mean? Where, where things change in time with technology and everything else. But all the years that we've been working together now is that we have that communication and we have that brotherhood, that family. Like we have grown tight as a family. We're not just friends on the racetrack. We are family off the racetrack where we can all hang out, go get something to eat. We, we cut up. We have fun. And I think that's the biggest difference of it is, is that we don't look at it as a job. We look at it as an opportunity, and we have fun doing what we want to do. And we don't need somebody to push us harder or to, or to put a carrot out there and say, do a little bit better, you can get this, is that we all have that same mindset that we just want to go out there and we want to be better each and every time. And we're not afraid to try new things and to grasp new things. And that's the thing that I see that's changed about my team is that we have matured, but we have not hit a plateau because we're not – we, we didn't get stubborn, we didn't get bullheaded and get comfortable about what we do, is that we always want, we, we all have stayed humble and we want to better ourselves. And I think that's the driving force that's behind us that's made us do the things that we've done over the, the last several years is because our work ethic and our mindset and, and never staying comfortable. We always make ourselves uncomfortable and we're always eager to learn new things. Yeah. I think that's what really defines our team and makes our team so special. Well, you're a great representative for NHRA, for Don Schumacher, for Matco Tools, everybody, and uh, proud to proud to be uh, friends of yours as well. So, Antron, what a deal. What a guy. Well, I appreciate it, Doug. I appreciate it. It's always good stuff, man. It's always, it's always great being on. And you know, hey, when we're always here on MRN, man, I tell you what, brother. You know you've done something special because we're talking to the best with you and uh, Marty every time, and uh, we just really enjoy being a part of your guys' station and talk show. Antron, uh, we're going racing here uh, on, on Friday. Good luck uh, at Pomona. Good luck with the Winter Nationals, and good luck with the uh, uh, 2017 season. We appreciate it. Anytime, Marty. Thanks for having me on, brother. And uh, it's going to be some exciting stuff this year on, on uh, FS1 and on Fox Network, man. Uh, we're looking for some big things, and we're going to strive, man. We're going to strive to try to bring another one home this year. It's going to be tough, but we're ready to put that work in. Well, maybe I'll see you Friday out there at uh, at Pomona. I'm going to do the Yes program again, so hopefully we'll see you there, yep. buddy. Oh, cool. Well, I'll see you out there, Doug, for sure. Right on. Three-time world champion of the top fuel division, Antron Brown, joining us on the straight line. When we return, we'll have more of the kickoff of the 2017 season. A new generation of NASCAR stars is being forged. Christopher Bell gets the advantage in the outside lane. Here comes Ben Rose battling back. Drivers tested by racing's toughest speedways. They're banging tires. Oh, they're in the wall. And fiery veterans. Johnny Sauter mixing up with Daniel Hebron. The NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, a baptism by fire. They both stay on the throttle and at the strike. John Hunter Nemechek. Season premiered February 24th on the Motor Racing Network, the voice of NASCAR. It's all over at Martinsville, Virginia. Richard Petty has pulled it off. Roll back Thursday. Classic MRN race broadcast on MRN.com. Waltrip will win the track race to turn three. Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. Hard goes Earnhardt. Everybody else spins either way. Out of the number four corner, down to the line. Neil Bonnet is going to win. The Northwestern Bank 400. He'll beat Waltrip a two-car length. What a finish here at North Wilkesboro. Roll back Thursday. Thursdays at 1 Eastern on MRN.com. On the racetrack, you can only go as far as your engine can take you. It's the same on the highway. Making a run with a Detroit engine under the hood gives you the industry-leading fuel economy, reliability, and durability your business needs. The Detroit DD13, DD15, and DD16 engine solutions are specifically engineered to make a run as profitable as possible. Don't just want better business solutions, demand them. 
Learn more at DemandDetroit.com. You're logged in to the straight line. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's Doug and Marty. Big thanks to Antron Brown for joining us on this 2017 kickoff of the drag racing season here on MRN.com. I'm Marty Huff along with Doug Herbert. Uh, catching up on some of the things that happened during the offseason. One was a big announcement out of the NHRA with two fairly big announcements as far as qualifying or as far as policy is concerned. One on qualifying, one on the point situation during the finals at Pomona, which is now a uh, point and a half, much like it is at Indy. That's a lot of pressure, uh, yeah. you know, going into the end of the year, and it's going to open up some of those positions. I mean, you go into the end of the year, and now maybe with that point and a half, you've got an extra car or two that are capable of winning the championship. So, uh, you know, I'm still a little bit bummed that they took the points away for setting records. I mean, records, yeah, right. that's a big deal. Like, you set a record, that means you're the leader. Give you, you know, get some bonus points for that. They go cut that out, it. but at least those points and a half, that kind of makes up for that. Uh, but it definitely puts a lot of pressure on. At, at Indy and also at the end of the year at Pomona, right? Uh, you know, it's going to open it up. Yeah. Probably make that last race a little more, a little more exciting. No question about it, because uh, I, I believe it was Antron that uh, uh, that wrapped up the season at Las Vegas. The last thing NHRA wants is to have one of their championships not go down to the final race of the season. That's your Super Bowl. We just got right. done with the Super Bowl. That's your Super Bowl, and they want everything contested at Pomona, if, uh, if at all possible. And it also brings out the, the possibility of more cars, more competitors being right. uh, Well, and media, it's a bigger media event and, sure. and all that that happens at Pomona. Yeah. So I think, that's, I, I think that's good. NHRA is making some good changes. Uh, I talked to Lewis Bloom the other day, and he was mm -hmm. boning up on all of his uh, <laughs> statistics, you know, so pretty neat. And, and uh, they're going to have some new, apparently, TV features this year involving statistics and uh, oh, cool. th uh, that are going to uh, make a little more fan-friendly and, and try and get people to relate to, uh, you know, understand some of the technical things that are involved with the statistics and the car performances and so forth right. at the races. So uh, pretty neat. And then also qualifying. During the countdown, uh, NHRA has put in a provision that if, uh, if somebody is eligible for the countdown and there is not two qualifying sessions run, that the, the, the driver that is uh, in, in the countdown would be in the race. So, uh, and I and know they've had something similar to that for a while, but maybe they changed it uh Maybe they change it a little bit or something. But anyways, I, I think that's good. You know, that people go to the races. They want to see John Force race or whoever. And, uh, you know, the qualifying gets shortened up by weather. And, and then all of a sudden they don't get to see their guy that they came to see race on Sunday. So I, I think all in all that's probably pretty good. And that's just in the countdown. So if, if anybody that's in the playoffs is still going to have their opportunity to uh, get their points for the, uh, for the playoffs. Again, trying to make that last race at Pomona count in trying to get as many people in there as possible. Yep. Um, something that we'll also see uh, at Pomona is uh, Elite Motorsports back to Chevys. They tried the one year in the Dodge and it really didn't work out. So yeah, they just, uh, I was surprised they didn't work with Alan Johnson a little bit more, uh, Alan and his dad, and kind of yeah. use a little bit of that, but maybe there was something going on there that we didn't know about. I don't know. Uh, but, of course, they still continue to run the one Chevrolet car. Uh, yes, with Vinny Nobile. With, with, with Vincent Nobile. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't think it'll be a big learning curve. They just change the bodies on those cars and go back out there and run them again. I don't think it'll be a big deal. Yeah, No, I don't think it'll be a big deal. But I, I think it, who, who it thinks it's a big deal <laughs> is Judd Coughlin and Eric Anders. They think it's a big deal because well, they're, they're going to be, yeah. Yeah, oh, they're gonna be uh, really happy about that. Well, you would think so. I mean, it's ne you're never going to know until you get out there and actually put some times up on the scoreboards yeah. to know what really is going on. But I would say, yeah, probably so. Big thanks to everybody involved, including award-winning producers Robbie Mays and Daryl Smith. For Doug, I am Marty. We will talk to you next week right here on The Straight Line. You've been listening to The Straight Line. Presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts, The Straight Line is the show for drag racing fans. Tune in again next Thursday on MotorRacingNetwork.com and the MRN app. The Straight Line is also available on demand at MotorRacingNetwork.com's Media Center, 
on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and in iTunes or the Google Play Store. The Straight Line is a production of the Motor Racing Network.